Hello, Dr. Phillips from the Science Zone with yet another thing you shouldn't try at home. We are gonna be looking at the flammability of vapors today. That's right, I'm going to fill this jug with alcohol vapors and I'm gonna light them on fire. What I have here in this beaker is 90% isopropanol. So that's an alcohol that is what rubbing alcohol is made of. It's also what you find in the hand sanitizers that we're all using a lot of right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pour this liquid directly into this bottle and I'm going to roll it around. Now, any kind of alcohol is highly hygroscopic. That means that it's going to evaporate very, very quickly. So I've got this bottle rolling around, making sure that I coat it evenly with the alcohol. But while that alcohol is inside, it's evaporating and there are vapors inside of the bottle that are forming. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pour it out. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot that comes out. But just to make sure that everyone is convinced that we are igniting vapors and not the alcohol, we'll go ahead and drain it. Again, this is something you don't want to try at home. I'm putting on safety goggles, and here I have two matches and a lighter. And of course, need to keep hand safety in mind. So I'm going to light two matches and drop them in. Get a nice flame going and... Whoa! Yes, that is a whoosh bottle. Now let's put my hand on top and see what happens. bottle is getting stuck to my hand and slowly but surely it is beginning to collapse. But what's happening here is the air that was inside of the bottle was shoved out of the bottle when the whoosh happened and now the air that's left inside is very gradually cooling and as it cools there's less pressure on the inside of the bottle than there is out in the atmosphere and that's what's causing this four liter bottle to crush. You also notice that there's a cloud forming inside. So what's happened here is that there is a little bit of water formed and there's water vapor inside. And that's due to just air or water in the air. But that water, has, that water vapor has hit particulates that are in the air and now we have a cloud forming inside of this bottle. If I hold my hand here long enough, we'll see that bottle continue to collapse. And, oh look, there's water forming at the very bottom of the bottle. So we see that our cloud is actually raining. And now, the air has gone back into the bottle and we can reuse it. If you enjoyed today's content and would like it to continue, please consider joining these generous supporters of the Science Zone and our virtual engagement platform by clicking the donate button here or on our website. Thank you.